All right, so in lesson one, you are going to start the chapter on write graph and identify solutions of inequalities. So I want you to look up these three things, either in your packet or online, and report those back to me when I see you next time in class. So when I look at inequality keywords, these get a little tricky and I have to match them up with inequality symbols. So when I talk about keywords and I say at least, at least, that means greater than because if you have to be at least a certain height to ride on a roller coaster, you have to be greater than that height. Or you can also be equal to that height. So greater than or equal to. No more than, that means if there's a certain height requirement, you cannot be greater than that height, so therefore you have to be less than or equal to that height. More than means greater than, so we point it to the right, and less than means left or less than that height. The word at most means well, if I have to be 48 inches to ride the roller coaster, I cannot be greater than, but I could be equal to. So I have to be less than or equal to that height. A minimum requirement means that you have to be that height or greater. So greater than, oops, or equal to. A maximum height means you cannot be any higher than that height, so less than or equal to. Up to, so if you have to be up to 48 inches, you can't be more than it, so you have to be less than it. And then fewer than means you also have to be less than. Sometimes these get tricky and we'll be working on those, so um, just keep that in mind. You can always refer back to this. So let's talk about some scenarios, which I started to give you some of those when I was writing those symbols. So write an inequality for the following scenarios. The rider has to be at least four feet tall to ride the roller coaster. So we're gonna define rider by the variable r. And if they have to be at least four feet tall, that means they have to be greater than or equal to four feet. Can't be less than because then you couldn't ride the ride. Jacob wants at least $100 in his bank account by the summer. So we want to make J for Jacob our variable. We know he wants at least $200 in his bank account. He could want more than that. So we could say he, he could have greater than $200, but he also can have exactly $200. Katie has no more than $10 to spend at the mall. So K for Katie, $10, and she doesn't have any more than 10. So she could spend exactly 10, but she also can spend less than 10. But it makes sense that she cannot spend greater than 10 because she doesn't have that much money. A healthy baby weighs at least six pounds. So baby, six pounds, and they can weigh more than six pounds if they're healthy. So we could say greater than, or they could weigh exactly six pounds, equal to. James J had fewer than six baskets at the game. So this time they're telling us the variable is J, and we know he had less than or fewer than six. George weighs, G for George, more than, greater than, 65 pounds. We don't put the equal to sign because he doesn't weigh exactly 65. He weighs more than 65. Hannah's backpack weighs less than 50 pounds. So backpack, 15, less than. The cost of purse P, we know the variables P, cannot be greater than 55. So if it cannot be greater, it can be less than, and it doesn't say it can't equal it, so we can say it can be less than or equal to 55. Tyler has eight friends at most. Tyler, eight at most, means 
he doesn't have more than 8, which we would put less than, and he can't have equal to 8 friends. Stuart S. wants to work a maximum of 20 hours per day. So he can equal that amount, so the half equal sign, but he cannot work more than, so we always say less than or equal to. Each class C has to meet a minimum of three times per week. So minimum means they can do exactly three times, so that half equal sign. And they can do greater than three, they just cannot do less than. Katie K can spend up to $240 on her back to school shopping spree. So up to 240 means she can't spend any more, so she can spend less than, and she can spend exactly 240 as well. When looking at all of these scenarios, you want to make sure that you're using a variable, the number in the given situation, and then you want to think really hard about the sign that you're putting in. Does it make sense that it's less than? Does it make sense that it's greater than? Or could it be exactly that number? And remember, less than, the arrow is going to point to the left. And greater than, the arrow is going to point to the right. Looking at the second page. We have to make sure that when we write inequalities, we put our variable first. And when we do that, we have to make sure we flip the inequality symbol. So we're gonna practice that in these examples. I'm gonna do the first two. So I'm gonna flip my variable and my number, and then I can see that my arrow is pointing to the right, so we're gonna point that arrow to the left. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna flip my variable and my number to opposite sides, and then I'm going to see my arrows pointing to the left, so I'm going to point it to the right, and I'm also going to include that half equal sign. I want you to complete four, 3, 4, and 5 on your own, and we'll talk about those next time in class. Finding out if a solution works for an inequality. Again, I'm going to do the first two, and I want you to do the second three. In number six, it says x is less than or equal to 7. So I'm going to import all my choices in for x. Is 9 less than 7? No. Is negative 1 less than or equal to 7? Yes. Is 7 less than or equal to 7? Well, it's equal to, so I can box in that one. And is 0 less than or equal to 7? Yes. In number seven, this one says x is greater than or equal to negative 4.1. So let's test all of our options. Negative 4.1 is greater than or equal to a negative 4.1. Yes, because it is equal to. Negative five is greater than negative 4.1. No, nope, it is less than. Negative 3 is greater than negative 4.1. Sure is. And 0 is greater than negative 4.1, and it is not. So you are going to do 8, 9, and 10. So when we're graphing inequalities, we have to learn about a few steps in that process. So we have to learn about, we're going to go to the things to remember, if the inequality symbol is a less than symbol, our graph arrow points to the left. If our inequality symbol points to the right, Our graph arrow also points to the right. So when I'm looking at my very first example, I'm going to draw a number line. And I'm going to put the number that is on it plus two numbers to the right 
and two numbers to the left. Now, in order to place a inequality on a number line, I also have to know about the open and closed circle. And so you might remember these from sixth grade. An open circle is a less than, or I'm sorry, a greater than or less than sign. And a closed circle, or one that we fill in, we color in completely, is a greater than or equal to sign or a less than or equal to sign. So when I look at this very first example, I can see that I have a less or greater than symbol. Therefore, I'm gonna put an open circle on three. And since that's a greater than and points to the right, I'm gonna graph and color in my number line to the right. On the very next one, I'm gonna draw my number line. I'm gonna put a positive six two numbers to the right, two numbers to the left. And then if you notice, my inequality does not have the variable first. So I have to go in and I have to say, well, I need to flip my variable and my six. And then I also need to flip my symbol before I can put anything on my graph. So when I do that, I can see that I have a less than or equal to sign. Therefore, I have to put a circle on six and I also have to color it in. And then after I color it in, I decide which direction does my arrow go in. So I know that it's less than, so it points to the left, so I fill in everything from the left on. So when we write inequalities, we actually do the opposite. We are gonna choose a variable. So in this case, I'm just gonna say x. And then I can kind of look at those things to remember and say, okay, well, my, my graph right here is going to the right, so I have to have an arrow that points to the right or an inequality. And I can also see that right here I have a filled in graph, so that means that I have to have that equal sign right here, as well as the number, and I can see that that filled in circle is above negative two. Let's take a look at the next one choose a variable, I typically choose x. Look at the direction of your graph. So this graph goes to the left. So I'm gonna put an inequality that also points to the left. And then I can see that this circle is not filled in. It's not solid, it's open. So I do not need a half equal sign on my inequality. I just leave it as a less than, less than pointing to the left and then I put a positive six because that's exactly where that circle is above. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to use these four examples. If you need to play the video again, go ahead and do so. And I want you to do these six practice where you're going to graph, and then the next six practice which you are going to write the inequality. So these examples right here, are dealing with this and this in your notes, okay? So do those 12 examples. If you need to replay the video, remember you're also doing this section right here and this section right here. Okay, please email me if you have any other questions.